Hello, it is Wednesday, June 8th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Wednesday puzzle, so perhaps a little tougher than the last two days, although um, it does seem that some people found yesterday maybe a bit tough for a Tuesday. Um, we'll have to see how today goes. It's another themed puzzle, and this themed puzzle has been brought to us by Skylar, David Connell, and, as always, the inestimable hood monster and the invaluable Timothy Mark. So thank you so much to the four of them, benefactors of the Daily Soul Patreon campaign, for directly supporting this channel and um, bringing us this content, this edition, this video. And thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. I do very much appreciate that. And if you'd like to help by contributing a few uh, pounds a month or the equivalent in your local currency, uh, you can get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. As a benefactor, you'd also get the official mug. So uh, there's a link in the description field underneath the video if you're interested in exploring that possibility. And there you will also find a link to join the Daily Solve Discord chat server, which is where you can spend time with other members of the Daily Solve viewing community and even solve their crosswords if you're interested. Um, someone asked uh, in the Constructors Corner channel um, what software is, uh, constructors use. Um, and I think many people use crosshair.org, but I don't know if there's other software people are using um, before they put them there. So I don't know, perhaps if you're a crossword constructor, you can head over to the uh, Discord um community in the Constructor's Corner channel and enlighten um, <laughs> that person uh, better than I am apparently able to. Anyway, let's move on to today's crossword. This is a Wednesday puzzle, of course, constructed by Bruce Haight. I assume it's pronounced in that manner anyway. I'm not certain. Um, it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts, of course. Oh, and Bruce Haight has constructed several dozen New York Times crosswords in the past, so a very experienced uh, Times crossword constructor. And that's that. It'll be a themed puzzle of some sort. Let's start solving. Plate appearance. Now, uh, I wonder if this means plate as in a plate on the baseball diamond. Could it be an at-bat? A, a, um, a given appearance at-bat in, in baseball, maybe? <clears throat> let's um let's check the crosses and see day and night i'm not sure follow closely could be to tail somebody strong german brew a bock perhaps type of beer months long couples retreat uh, i don't know it's not the ark is it no noah's ark i'm wondering if that's sort of a clever way to refer to um, the fact that all of the animals on the ark were coupled up. Busy is taken. I'm not sure. Some kiwis. Oh, okay. Well, this AO is an unusual um, positioning of letters, but it works perfectly well here. Maoris, the um, major, a major indigenous group of, of uh, New Zealand. Okay, day and night. Oh, a.m. p.m. I see. <laughs> Literally day and night, and we have the the question mark there indicating that this is a bit of wordplay. So that we are we are literally putting um, phrases that uh, a.m. and p.m. terms that mean daytime and nighttime. Doth choose a comedy routine. <laughs> doth choose a comedy routine. So the doth just means does, but presumably suggests that we're going to have. Um, um, archaic, archaic or poetic language. So maybe, so, uh, but I don't know what that is. Picks a what? Hmm. I'm not sure. I assume it's picks. Busy is what? I don't know. Oh, and this was, if this is pick, this is arc after all. Okay. That's, that's, that's funny. Um, I'm not sure. Frankie of the four seasons. Um, Was it? I keep thinking Frankie Valley, but that's a different. Uh, pretty sure that's a different group. Uh, short break. 
Director Brooks could be Mel Brooks, director of um, Blazing Saddles at all. Love in Livorno, Amore. And OK. Could be yes, but not really sure. Blank, we good. Are we good? Are we good with Amore? I think so. Fool. Could be to con somebody, maybe. Blank, the only one. Am I the only one? Am I the only one struggling with uh, Busy and Frankie of the Four Seasons? Short break. Oh, a vacay. <laughs> so um, here, the question mark is, is sort of slightly cluing us into the fact that the short is not referring to the length of the break, but rather that we are shortening the word and we're doing it in a slangy kind of way. Okay, so maybe it is yes or yep. Yes seems more likely. That seems like a more likely cross. Doth choose a comedy routine. She doth choose a comedy routine. She picks... I just don't know what that is. I'm sorry. Maybe it is Frankie Valley. Picks... Lines. That does make sense with comedy routines. Two-way. Okay, so two-way could be dual. Maybe... Oh, picketh lines. <laughs> That's where the doth comes in. Ah, picketh lines. And then we, we've we taken the phrase picket lines, a sort of common ordinary phrase, and we have transformed it into a thematic one to create picketh lines. She picketh lines. She doth choose a comedy routine. There we go. All right. Now we'll have to see if the if the rest of the thematic material is um, this same format or if it's some other thing involving adding a letter or particularly adding the letter H. But if it is adding the letter H, it may or may not all be this sort of, um, you know, uh, archaic English verb transformation. Okay, if you're busy, you're tied up. There we go. That was straightforward enough. Well-used pencils are stubs. Uh, something, if you're robust, you're in fine fettle, you're hale. So this this was Frankie Valley after all. Is it an I? E? A Y? None of them look right to me. <laughs> One of them must be. Citizen, oh, here we go. Citizenry, okay, so it, it, is the, it is this archaic English thing. Citizenry doth work hard. Public... Utilities, public, toil, public, what? Work hard. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not able to jump right to it. Things cast for films. And Middlemarch novelist is Elliot. Setter fetter. What is that? Setter, fetter, fetter. Not really sure what that is, sorry. Football cheer would be ole. And the football spelled in the Spanish manner is cluing us into the ole there. Routing word could be via. Memoirs and profiles, informally. Bios, maybe? You could argue that a, a memoir and a profile are, you could, you could argue those are forms of biography. So a setter fetter, oh, it was a leash. So keep your setter, your dog, um, fet. I don't know, I think I'm, I'm reading that poorly. Okay, so citizenry doth work hard. Well, it ends in TH, which is actually the least, that's the least surprising thing here. So we need an original phrase, public, that ends in T. And here we have things cast for films. Movie roles? Let's check this L. Golf variable. Lay, I suppose. Don't people say that about golf? You, The lay is sort of where the ball ends up after your stroke, after your drive, whatever. Uh, sound heard here and there on Old McDonald's Farm. Uh, well, there are quite a few, aren't there? Because there's Baba and Moo Moo and Oink Oink and... 
Maybe it's lie. Oink. That would be more grammatically correct if it were lie. So perhaps that's right. Okay. LPGA star Thompson. Oh, that's golf as well, isn't it? That's funny. Uh, Post-boomer cohort would be Generation X after the baby boom. Um, LPGA star Thompson. Uh, I'm not sure. Shuss with a shoot. Oh. Shuss. That's some kind of skiing. Oh, ski. It's some kind of ski term with a shoot. I'm not sure, but this looks like it could be Lexi. That's one of the only names I can think to fit this format. Locale for... Well, I was going to say locale for drawers in the study, but I wonder if the question mark makes this locale for drawers, people who are drawing. Um, is it a stool of some sort? Yeah. Fastball in slang. I'm not sure that'll be a baseball thing. Upstage, say. Eclipse. If you eclipse somebody, you outshine them, you upstage them. It may burst your bubble. A pin, perhaps, straightforwardly enough. Watery. Um, damp, or doesn't fit. A chisel. To etch something into stone, to chisel into stone. Elaine Blank, Labor Secretary under George W. Bush. I think Elaine Chow, spelled this way, I think. Something is watery, it's thin. You could say that's thin gruel, watery. Subject of many, a funny TikTok. A cat, perhaps? I'm just guessing there. That seems like... Um, I'm not very familiar with TikTok, but pretty much everything on the internet involves cats at, at some point, so... They may be close to reception. And here we have... They may leave a lengthy paper trail. L litigants? No... Um, oh, litter bugs, maybe? Oh, yeah, people who people who frequently litter are, may, may in this case, literally, not metaphorically, leave a lengthy paper trail. They may be close to reception. Hotel something? I mean, hotel reception desk is what I'm wondering. Title six-year-old of 1950s children's literature. Is it Eloise? She lived, it was Eloise the one who lived in the Plaza Hotel in New York. I think that might be the case. Fraternal order, the Elks, that's a, uh, a fraternal or order. A, um, I don't know, sort of like <laughs> somewhere in between the spectrum of like the Rotary Club and the Masons, I think, but I don't know very much about any of these organizations, I must be honest. Okay, ice blank. Ice cool? That's not right. Somewhat. A bit, maybe? Um, oh, hotel bars, maybe. Hotel bars are often close to reception, in fact. So, oh, this could be ice flow, maybe? And once popular activity... Ah, here we go. Once popular activity hath no more fans. Uh, fad something... A fad would have been maybe a once popular activity. And then small amount in a recipe could be a dash, a dash of salt. Job in the TV biz. Something er. Uh, doth apply graffiti. Okay, marketh. So market rate, marketh. I don't know. I'm not very good at this theme, am I? Uh, locale for drawers in the study. We have fastball and slang. Uh, mal de tete, maybe? A headache? In French? Hop kiln. An oast? Is that an oast? Oh, I think it is. Sorry, this is a very... Um, if this is the answer, it's a pretty... Maybe it's not. Maybe it's an oven. No. Because an oast... 
that has something to do with storing beer production in some fashion, but might not be relevant here. Citizen re- citizenry doth work hard. Public toilet. There we go. Public toilet has been transformed into public toilet. That citizenry doth work hard. They toilet. Okay, they toil. Yek. So yek could be bleh, maybe? And locale for drawers in the study. Art school? Oh, I see. Right. So it wasn't just drawers that is that is the, the sort of punny uh, interpretation of a word here. It's also study. So we're not, st- it's not in the study as in, in the room of a home known as the study. It's people who are actually studying in school. They're in art school. Oh, maybe this is Oast. And then what is this? Rash sensation, an itch. Uh, rock with four Emmys. So this will certainly be a name. Oh, Chris Rock. There we go. And a fastball and slang, a heater, maybe? It must be. Okay, I suppose this is an oast. Great. And once, oh, a fad, <laughs> the fad dieth. That's a, that's kind of a good phrase. So there that um, obviously we're taking fad diet and adding an H to create fad dieth. It is no longer uh, popular with fans. It dieth. Okay, job on the TV, an ad rep. Right, okay, so I was right to remove the R from the end of here. Um, market, oh, I'm just not good at this. Market something, market was something with a P. I suppose it's difficult because the original phrase could be absolutely anything and bears no relevance generally to the final answer. Um, I don't know. Shuss with a shoot, something ski goes out. And square things, square meals. Monastery figure could be an abbot in a, um, you know, preside, presiding over monks. Goes out. Oh, ebbs, as in the tide ebbs, it goes out. Uh, Abu Simbel, Lake Nasser landmark. I must be right. Uh, a record is a log, or to record is to log. A and B and DC are streets. So Washington, DC is arranged on a grid that involves. Um, lettered streets. Okay, what next? Grains and some milk. Oats, maybe oat milk. Relaxes, probably ends with an S. And whammies, not sure. Jack of 1960s TV. Jack Parr was a talk show host. Is it that? Character blank. Um, I would have guessed character study first, but that doesn't fit. Character what? Uh, bail out. Rescue? You bail somebody out, you rescue them. Oh, is this parasky? Oh, a parachute. I was thinking some kind of, um, um, I don't know, something you go through, like a luge or something like that. Uh, I had that completely wrong. It's a parachute, so parasky. I see. Okay. And then Boyle's Law subject. Boyle's Law. Oh, that's a gas thing. I, I have the, the faintest scratch of a memory of that from, from much too long ago. Um, okay, so doth apply, apply graffiti. He doth apply graffiti. He marketh... This is not helping me, is it, when I read them aloud? Um... Planes? Plates? Places? Oh, marketplaces. Yes, marketplaces. You literally mark places. You apply graffiti. There we go. Character, actor. And relaxes. um, Loafs, maybe? To be on the hunt is to sniff, perhaps? Sheepish one. Not sure. NASCAR stat, no idea. Deposit of a sort. Could be an ore deposit. Maybe sniff is not right. Maybe loafs is not right. Horn with a sultry voice. Uh, I don't necessarily know what exactly this is referring to, but Lena Horn could be 
I mean, that is the name of an actress, so rim could be the lip of a glass, for instance. Thingy could be an item. Many profs are PhDs. Some boards, exam boards. And breakfast cereal with little balls. Kix is a breakfast cereal with little balls. So if something has been blown, it's been ruined. And here, oh, here we have rock. Oh, and, and it's our final clue, final theme clue, that is. Runway Walker hath mega talent. Um, runway talent walker. Um, model, model rocket, model rocket. There we go. This model rocket. She hath mega talent. NASCAR stat, MPH maybe, miles per hour. Deposit of a sort, okay, it is or after all, I think. To publish private info about one in online in modern lingo is to dox somebody. Dox being, I'm pretty sure that's because it's a contraction of documents, as in dox, D-O-C-S. Sheepish one, okay, this could be a U, which is what I wanted it to be earlier. And to be on the hunt is to prowl, and I uh, see if that person relaxes, uh, they, um, he lulls. And there we have it. All right. Okay. So I think it's safe to say I certainly found this a more difficult puzzle than yesterday's uh, Tuesday crossword. And uh, several people did say they found yesterday's um, maybe a bit trickier than I gave it credit for. But today's, uh, there's no question, I found this a little tougher. Um, but some very clever, some very clever, clever theme clues in here. So um, uh, if we doth choose a comedy routine, we picketh lines from picket lines. Uh, when the citizenry doth work hard, the public toileth. From public toilet. Um, uh, the once popular activity, which hath no more fans, uh, well, when that happens, the fad dieth. From fad diet. Um, to doth apply graffiti is to market places for market places. And finally, uh, the runway walker hath mega talent. Uh, that model rocketh from Model Rocket. And there we have it. A uh, a very nice and silly linguistic theme from Bruce Haight. Um, and yes, why, what was it about this puzzle that I found difficult? Um, part of it, I got occasionally um, occasionally hung up on these very theme answers, trying to make them fit. But in some cases, I just got. Um, stuck on regular answers like Frankie Valley. I don't know why I was skeptical of that. I thought I was, I don't know. I don't know why. Um, what else? I didn't know Lexi, Lexi Thompson, but it's a sports answer. That's no big surprise. Um, I don't know. Well, now I'm struggling to find necessarily particular, <laughs> particular clues that were tripping me up. But just in general, I found that there was sort of resistance running through the puzzle. Um, anyway, let me know what you found difficult about this. If you did, in fact, perhaps you didn't at all. And I, I should move on anyway, because as I recall, there were actually a surprisingly high number of comments on yesterday's puzzle. So let's get to those now. Um, all right. Well, first off, uh, <laughs> As the, as, the clue, as the clue predicted in yesterday's puzzle, I was surprised to learn that sharks do not have bones. And as Lars Wilms explains, sharks have cartilage as their skeleton, as do stingrays. And um, Echo also says, uh, sharks are cart uh, cartilaginous animals, so instead of a bony skeleton, it's made of cartilage. This means a few things, but the first thing that comes to mind is that they don't leave fossils outside of teeth and some skin prints as the teeth and the scales are bony and so can be preserved. This also means that sharks kind of have teeth growing on their skin. That's it's also new information to me. Okay. Uh, Sam, aka Frisco17, points out that I misread the five down clue. Uh, it wasn't referring to a stat in baseball, but rather basketball. I don't know how I made that mistake. And the answer was reb or reb or rebounds. Um, Sam does say, don't worry, I made the exact same error when I solved this puzzle. So thank you. And points out my strange lapse in memory. Uh, Sam quoth the puzzle, the Raymond, or the, 
Sam quoth the puzzle the raven, pointing out the line is, quoth the raven, nevermore, as I sat there and tried to think of every possible um, synonym for quoth or stated or remembered, but couldn't think of the actual word used in the poem. So thank you, Sam. Uh, Bella Forster confirms Macs do still, Mac computers do still have the spinning beach ball of death. So thank you for confirming that. Um, Old Footer points out Sable, which I think I tripped up on as the, oh, black. The clue is simply black. And I think that, um, I think that uh, vagueness tripped me up. But Old Footer, uh, Old Footer explains Sable, it's a kind of black fur that was traded from Russia. And as a fur, I'm certainly more familiar with sable. I, I guess it's also used, it must also be used as a color, the color of sable, which I think I was less less aware of. Anyway, thank you, Old Fooder. And uh, Jacob Greenwood explains that the twins who were referenced in yesterday's puzzle as a sports team are Minnesota's MLB franchise. Minneapolis and St. Paul are nicknamed the Twin Cities, hence the twin, the team's name. All right, and that's that after that marathon of comments from yesterday's puzzle. Um, that means that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the puzzle. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please do subscribe to the channel. And apologies for my rather hoarse voice today. I don't know what's going on there, but um, sorry about that. I'll have to drink plenty of water after this. Um, and that's that, I suppose. I will be back tomorrow for the Thursday puzzle, where we will get certainly a trickier puzzle probably with some kind of intricate or tricky theme. So do come back for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.